Hi, my name's Justin Ramson and I'm a senior model designer here at the LEGO Group. So we've taken one of the most iconic structures, uh, which is the Statue of Liberty, and then we've apocalypseburgified it, and it's got loads of secret hideouts and bases that have basically sprung up around, uh, around the monument to defend the Bricksburgers against the oncoming Duplo attack. It's a big size model, we know that all the fans love huge models, so we've made another one, and uh, yeah, it's great to, to have the chance to make such a, an iconic structure in, in our favourite brick. So this model's made up of multiple rooms. So you've got iconic architectures such as the coffee shop where Emmett orders the overpriced coffee. Um, you've got Chainsaw Dave's sweeten up camper van that's used to, to prop up the tablet of the statue. You've got a gym that's made out of a train so the, the characters can literally train to become battle ready against the Duplo invasion. It's also an armory where they can get armoured up, a tattoo parlour in a barber shop where they can get a brand new haircut to, to look even more angry and amped up. Wild Sal's got a hideout so she can just chill and relax and brood. And then at the very top of the statue you've got a, a room for Where's My Pants Guy so he can hide away. Um, and then uh, different platforms and levels are, are throughout the model so the characters can stand and, and look out into the distance and seek out trouble. So one thing I wanted to do when creating this model was try and shove in as many hidden easter eggs and surprises uh, that reference other LEGO films and also just personal uh, interest um, into the set. So uh, yeah, we've got stuff like the, the chair kicking um, function that's hidden away in Bad Cop's uh, jail which some people may remember from LEGO Movie 1. We've also managed to put references into the Ninjago movie, also LEGO Batman movie and just had some fun with the model. It's one of the easter eggs that I'm really happy about is that I've collaborated with the, the graphic designer who's also from the same uh, region in the UK that I'm from and we've put our favourite dish uh, which is a chicken parmesan uh, on the menu in Apocalypseburg so it's perfect for those starving wasteland appetites. So the graphic designer's job on the movie is we would take reference art from the studio or we'd create our own. It was a really good timing when we were creating this set because the new trailer came out. So anything that we kind of missed on our storyboard section, we were like just freeze framing that trailer every second to make sure that we got all those little bits in that are gonna be in the movie. So like when people get the set, it's gonna be like a pretty accurate representation of what they're seeing on the screen. So with this set, we get Emmett, we get Wildstyle, we got Apocalypseburg Batman, we got Bad Cop, Where's My Pants Guy, Larry the Barista, Green Lantern, Harley Quinn, Chainsaw Dave, and then we get three Apocalypseburg residents as well. So I think my favourite from uh, this set is Larry, the barista, because he looks way more gnarly than we saw him in the first movie. And I just like the fact that his character's like grumpy and surly, and he's kind of like me. He's got two tattoos on his arms, which are the same that Chris McKay has. He directed the Lego Batman movie, and he voices Larry, the barista. So that was one of the little details that the studio really wanted to sneak in there. I don't know if he knows about that. So for this model, we've created some really interesting, fun new colour changes that I know fans will absolutely love. So stuff like the spikes in sand green or the um, container walls in sand blue. I know all the, the LEGO fans out there will go crazy for it. We've also created some really fun elements for the, the LEGO Movie 2. So elements such as the, the armour for Batman, which gives him this apocalyptic feel, and uh, yeah, Wild Styles goggles and, and hood, and bringing back classics such as the, the barbed wire for the set. So I know people will really get excited over these small details. So when sculpting new elements, I normally start in clay. We work at a bigger scale because I feel that you can get more detail and then we get it scanned digitally. I then work on it on the computer and then it gets scaled down and made into awesome toys that go in the set. First off, there's Wild Style. She's got an updated wig with goggles, which is really cool. Secondly, there's Batman, who's got this absolutely ginormous new shoulder padded wheel thing, which is really cool. And there's a new armour piece for Green Lantern. The idea was from the, the first movie, the world's got tougher, the world's got rougher, everyone's had to learn to how to adapt. So you can see like Batman's thriving on it, he looks like he's from the, the wastelands and he's taken to it like instantly, whereas uh, Emmett stayed exactly the same. So I think the idea is that everyone else has gone wild and got really aggressive and he's still a sweet naive like Emmett that we liked for the first movie. So before we got to the final set, there was around 30 or 40 different iterations. Um, I'm known in the office as a bit of a hoarder, so I've kept every single one of these and they just stack up around my uh, desk, which is, which is great for my other colleagues because I've got this big wall of Statue of Liberties. 
So I have two favorite parts when creating a set like this. Uh, so the first one is the concept phase. So I, when I get to explore new building techniques and oh, what can I put here? And oh, maybe this engine of this model can be put here. And oh, there's an old Lego truck that I had as a child. I'd love to put a reference to that in. So shove that in. And now it's a hot tub. But the second favorite thing is obviously when the fans get hold of the set and for the first time and have that fresh experience and new eyes looking at the model. That's really, really great to see there their reviews and hear their thoughts. But for me, the, the biggest mind-blowing thing will be to see the set in the movie on the silver screen at this huge scale. Um, I mean, that's the best thing is you're sitting during a film and go, ah, I made that or I was part of it. And that for me is gonna be the biggest thing. When I see my, my pieces that I've worked on in sets, it's super exciting to know that worldwide people will be playing with something that I sat at my desk sculpting. It's just very exciting to see it scaled down. Whilst I've worked at LEGO, it's, it's kind of hard to gauge how many I've designed, but I'd say, I don't know, upwards of 50, maybe? 50 new elements, yeah. I can't believe I'm here. Like, it's ridiculous. People get paid to play with LEGO, like, that's the end of. Yeah, there's yeah, 300 designers, but it's crazy that we're, we're basically living our childhood dreams. So my two bits of advice that I'd give to anyone who wants to be a LEGO designer is never stop building. Like just keep on building, being passionate about LEGO, go and study something that's art and design related and just get immersed in the brick. And the second thing is always just to test yourselves with, with building whatever it be. Um, I mean, I used to always love building people's faces out of Lego. So I never realized that I could make a car or I could make a castle or whatever it be. So it's been great to, to be pushed out of the comfort zone and, and build something that you may not be used to. If anyone wants to become a Lego designer, I think it's mainly keep up with the sketching and um, sharing ideas with people. Being able to take the feedback and then implement it in your own designs is always a great one because we're working with such a big team. It's um, everyone needs to be doing this constantly to try and improve. So I worked in the, the movies and I did makeup and hair and practical sculpting and then I was approached by someone from Lego that needed a new sculptor and it was like the perfect combination for that job role. So if any, anyone out there wanted to be an element designer, I'd say get practical, get sculpting, look at everything. You get a new brief and you're like, oh, this is pretty cool, and you just roll with it and every day can be different because you get such diverse briefs. So I applied for a job at Legoland, making the huge models that you see all over the world, and then one evening thought, oh, maybe I'll apply. Oh, I'll never be able to get it, but I'll apply, I'll see what happens. And yeah, now I'm here, and yeah, I've even got goosebumps talking to you. Yeah, ever since yeah, I was such an early age, I've wanted to do this, and, and now I'm doing it and getting to create amazing models for you guys.